Daniel just arrived at home. Is the food ready? <laughs> About to switch all the lights downstairs. Would be nice if you could just walk into your home and everything just works. Reliable location tracking can be difficult to get right. Either your privacy gets compromised with big tech solutions or you're stuck with systems that just don't work consistently. Today, I'm going to show you how to set up location tracking that actually works using OnTrax and Home Assistant. Is anyone home right now? Yes, Daniel and Amelia are both at home right now. Looks like the house is lively. And with Home Assistant Voice Preview Edition, integrated with AI, you can ask natural language questions about location entities that would be impossible to understand with regular setups. The best part? This entire system runs locally, keeps your data private, it's accurate and doesn't drain too much of the battery. I've had it running for a few weeks and after initial configuration, it hasn't missed a single arrival or departure for anyone in my household. Before we dive into the setup, let's understand what makes this location tracking solution different. My solution utilizes OnTrax, an open source location tracker that has undergone improvements over the years and it sends data directly to your Home Assistant instance. With OnTrax, no external servers are involved, meaning your location data remains private. Combined with Home Assistant AI capabilities, we get the best of both privacy and powerful features. I have been using the Alexa announcements and Home Assistant Voice Preview Edition to announce location information. It can be integrated with local AI models running on your machine or cloud-based services depending on your privacy preferences. But the real magic happens when we expose our location entities to the AI Assistant. By making our location data available to the AI, we enable natural language processing to understand contextual questions about where people are. Do you know how long was Daniel in the gym today? Let's see. Daniel's last recorded time at the gym was yesterday at 058. Today is June 23rd, and it's already late in the evening, but I don't see a newer record for today. So, based on the current data, I can't say he was in the gym today. Here is how it all works together. On tracks on your phone tracks your location and important waypoints. This data is sent to your Home Assistant where it's processed locally. Home Assistant stores this information via automations in entities that the AI can access. When you ask a question, the AI Assistant uses those entities to formulate an accurate response based on real-time data. I mean, to be honest, this combination isn't perfect, but it's reliable enough so that it can be used every day. Now, let's build this system from scratch starting with installing OnTrax and connecting it to Home Assistant. First, we need to install OnTrax on a mobile device. The application is available for both Android and iOS. Head to the App Store, search for the OnTrax and install the application. Once installed, hit Open, followed by Next. And here we have a bit of information that we're gonna be sending our location data to a server. In this case, it's Home Assistant over HTTP. And next, we're going to have to request the permission for our device to share the location data with OnTrax. I'm going to allow that and hit next. The notifications are optional. And then I'm also going to allow the background location tracking. So even though an application is not really open, it's going to track my location in the background and I'm going to allow it all the time. Once this is done, we can go back. And at this point, we're ready to set up the connection in the application and add the integration inside the Home Assistant. Click three lines in the top left corner, followed by Preferences and Connection. Inside the connection, select the mode HTTP. Paste the Home Assistant public URL inside the endpoint. I'm using Homeway as it allows you to create URL in seconds. Select the appropriate device ID and username, and you can leave password as blank. Once this is configured, we are ready to add the integration inside the Home Assistant. Inside the Home Assistant, go to the settings, device and services, add the integration in the bottom right corner, search for all tracks, click submit, 
and here we just have a bit of information on how to add the URL but since we, we have already done that we can click finish once added let's double check that the integration can fetch automatically update and waypoint information so those are available automatically in home assistant next when we click onto entity we can see daniel b which is exactly the username i have used in the mobile application and if we click on entity we can see it has started to track my location history since the integration have been added since i plan to use this integration with my voice preview edition I'm going to expose this entity to my voice assistant assist API. So then hopefully I'll be able to query the location data via voice commands. Finally, I'm going to assign this mobile device entity to a person so it can be tracked. Inside the settings, go to people, select my name, scroll down. Under track device, select the mobile device with on tracks, hit update. And that's all we need to do. With those settings in place, OnTrax will now be able to send location data directly to Home Assistant. Let's give it a quick test. Is Daniel currently at home? Yes, Daniel is currently at home. Basic tracking is quite interesting. However, the real power comes from knowing when you are at a specific place. OnTrax let us define waypoints. When we enter or leave these areas, the application will detect it instantly and those information can be sent to a server. To create a waypoint, go to the menu, click waypoint, plus in the top right corner, give your waypoint a description, latitude and longitude, as well as the radius. The radius of the waypoint will define how big it is. The radius of a waypoint will depend on the location. For example, in this park, I have it at about 250, and in other places like Pool, I keep it at about 25 and also I have another waypoint defined in this gym at about 20. Finding the right size is important. If it's too small you might experience false positives as you briefly leave and re-enter the area while still at the location. If it's too large you could get false triggers when you're actually at a different nearby location. It's worth experimenting to find the optimal radius for your specific situation. Now, the beauty of this integration is that this waypoint will automatically appear inside Home Assistant. Inside the settings, go to the area labels and zones. Click onto the zones. And as we can see on the right, all the waypoint information are available inside Home Assistant. If we click into individual endpoint, we can see it matches what we have created inside our application and Home Assistant can use these zones to determine your location as well as trigger automations. So when you enter or leave a zone, Home Assistant will register this as an event and would be able to store this information in a variable. This synchronization between OnTracks and Home Assistant gives us the foundation for our tracking system. Now let's make it even more smarter. Now that we have waypoint data in place, let's create some helpers so that we can track when we visit these locations. Helpers in Home Assistant are like custom variables that store information we want to track. To create helper inside Home Assistant, go to the settings, device and services, click into the helpers tab, create helper. In this case, it's gonna be date and time helper. Give it an appropriate name, set the icon if you want to. And then for the input date and time, once happy hit create. So I have already created my helpers to test this implementation. If we look at the example one, it has my name last at followed by the location name. And because it's date and time helper, it's gonna start the last date and time when I in particular have visit this location. And because it's exposed to the assist, I'm hoping that the voice preview edition with AI integration will be able to use natural language processing to answer questions if I ask when was the last time I have visited this particular location. Currently, due to Home Assistant limitation, this process has to be repeated per location. I did try to have a single entity that would expose the location as attribute. However, Voice Preview Edition wasn't able to pick those up. Inside the Home Assistant, go to the automation and scenes. Here is my last location tracking automation. Let's go to the YAML view so it's easier to explain. Essentially, the trigger condition for this automation 
is a state change on my mobile device, which is connected to the OnTrax application. And every time we move in and from a waypoint, this will trigger a state change. Next, we have the list of actions and variables. One variable per location name. And this consists of a waypoint name that we have defined inside the OnTrax app, a key for that waypoint, and a helper daytime entity that matches the entity name that we have just created. So essentially, when this automation runs and it detects a state change of any of these names, it will update the appropriate entity based on that name. We can test this automation by manually changing state on the mobile phone. Inside the developer tools, goes to the state, find the device, the current state is home, but I'm going to change to this state. This matches the waypoint name defined inside the own tracks. Hit set state. And as you can see, the state has been automatically updated. However, because the own tracks runs in the background, it was quickly reverted back to the correct one. And then if you go back to the settings, automations, you can see that the automation has been just triggered. If we go back and go to the device and services and helpers, look at the helper, we can see that it has been updated 29 seconds ago by our automation. When was Daniel last at football? Daniel was last at football on June 20th, 2025, at 17 hours, 42 minutes and 50 seconds. Just a quick moment before now, he's been quite the active guy. Do you know when last time Daniel played football? Yes, Daniel's last recorded time playing football was on June 20th, 2025, at 17 hours, 42 minutes and 50 seconds. Seems like he's been hitting the field pretty recently. When was the last time Daniel visited gym? Daniel was last at the gym on June 16th, 2025, at 20 hours, 53 minutes and 2 seconds. Looks like he's been staying active. I will provide the code of this automation in the description below in case you want to create this, but make sure to update the waypoint and entity helper names, or you will have to use exactly the same ones. Now let's take this a step further and add another layer of tracking by counting how many times each location is visited. Back to the helper section, what we're gonna do now is create a counter helper that is going to count a number of times a specific location has been visited. Give it a name, initial value and hit create. In my example, I have created Daniel gym visit this month, and that's going to be counter helper I'm going to be using, which basically is going to count how many times I have visited the gym on a particular month. And for the purpose of this example, I have created another helper, which is going to count the number of times I have visited the park. So now if we go back to the settings automations and go back to my location tracking automation, go back to the YAML, I had to update this automation to include another counter variable for the places where I want to count the number of visits. In this case, it's the park and the gym. And then if we scroll down, I had to add another choose condition to increment the counter if it's present. Let's quickly test this automation to ensure that it works as expected. In the developer tools, go to the state, find my device, force the state change as you can see here and then if we check our daniel gym visits this month the value has increased 13 seconds ago to two if we do that again and go back we can see it has been changed again and now it's at three and then if we double check park visits it's currently at zero and it has been created 16 hours ago however if we force the state change again, it has been updated a couple seconds ago and it's currently at one. How many times was Daniel in the gym this month? Daniel has been to the gym three times this month. Would you like me to do anything else? How many times was Daniel in the park this month? Daniel has visited the park once this month. Anything else you'd like to explore? By storing your waypoint data over time, you could actually be creative and use it as an insight and motivation. 
For example, that gym visit counter isn't just a number. It can actually become a condition in a different automation that generates responses. So to make use of that helper method, I have created another automation that runs at 12 on the last day of each month. And as an action, it creates a text, which basically has a condition to look at my gym visits. And if the number is below 10, it will create a funny message about me potentially needing to go more often. However, if the number is above 10, it will send the motivational message praising me for staying committed to my fitness goals. This is then sent to ChatGBT and the response is announced on my Alexa device or the voice preview edition. You've been to the gym three times this month. Looks like your muscles are still undercover, huh? Maybe more gym time will help you avoid turning into a couch potato. Keep going, you've got this. Flex biceps. You've been to the gym 12 times this month. You're doing an amazing job staying committed to your fitness goals. Keep it up. This is where it gets really interesting. Since OnTrack provides latitude and longitude, I think we can store these coordinates alongside our waypoint data and enable contextual awareness through natural language queries. Who is closest to the grocery store right now? Daniel is closest to the supermarket. The OnTracks can already track multiple people and with latitude and longitude values, all we need to do is calculate the distance between the location of all the people and the desired location, which could be updated in the Home Assistant every minute or so. This is beyond the scope of this video as it would get very long. Well, let me know in the comments below if this would be useful and I will look into it. Location tracking can drain battery from your phone. However, with the right settings, own tracks is quite efficient. The most important setting inside the application is the monitoring mode. I'm using the Move, which is high frequency and accuracy, but it consumes the most amount of power. The manual only cares about waypoint transitions, and it's a pretty good strategy if all you care about is the waypoint information. The significant changes is something in between, and the Quiet will not publish anything automatically. Next, if we go to the Preferences and Advanced, there are still a couple of more settings that we can change to balance the battery life with the location accuracy. The minimal location displacement, it's a distance in meters that has to change before you'll receive another location update. I kept mine at 100 for the location to be still quite accurate, but at the same time, I don't want to receive updates every couple of seconds. The location interval sets the value in seconds of on how often should the location be requested from the device. And then the same setting applies to the move mode, which is the mode I'm currently using, is the most frequent and accurate. And in this case, I'm requesting updates every 30 seconds. With these optimized settings, OnTracks typically uses less than 5% of my battery per day which I think it's a reasonable trade-off for a pretty reliable location tracking. If you've been frustrated with unreliable location tracking in the past, I encourage you to give this setup a try. It's pretty reliable after initial configuration and very responsive to my movement. As always, I've included links to everything we've used today in the description below, including my configuration files to get you started quickly. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, please give this video a like. If you have any questions about the setup, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Until next time.